Hey everyone! Today we're going to be looking at a series of insights from a book called The Celestine Prophecy by author James Redfield. I'm sure many of you have heard of it, if not read it, or perhaps you've seen the movie. The book itself chronicles a man who goes to Peru where he learns about an ancient manuscript that was recently discovered which shares insights about the process of waking up to a higher consciousness and understanding yourself better. We thought that the book shared very valuable insights for people growing spiritually and consciously, and we'd like to share it with you today. We do recommend checking out this book if you have time, as well as James' other work. But for those of you who don't have the time, here's the abridged version. The first insight! The first insight reveals that there is a mysterious way in which your life evolves. It talks about how there is something more, something spiritual, operating underneath everything we do. It encourages one to look at their life in a new way, taking the coincidences in their experiences seriously. People are realizing that these meaningful coincidences in their life are not coincidences at all, but synchronistic events, and following them will start you on your path to spiritual truth. The second insight! The second insight reveals that we are all in the process of constructing a new perception of the world that we live in. The first half of the millennium was controlled by the church, which interpreted spirituality for the people, passed down doctrine, restricted our beliefs, and controlled the avenues of power. It put one in a specific place within society, and humankind at the center of the universe in a battle of good and evil. These beliefs gave meaning to life, but they were challenged during the Renaissance and Reformation. From there, humans took to science to discover the meaning of life. Of course, science wasn't able to figure it out right off the bat, so in the meantime, we turned our attention to increasing material comfort while our adventurers and scientists searched for the meaning of life. Now, as we start a new century, we have lost touch with all meaning to life, but have achieved the material comfort that we sought after. People are beginning to wake up and realize the state of the world, and we're beginning to look inward at ourselves. It's time for us to reconnect with life's ultimate purpose. The Third Insight the third insight begins a new view of life. It describes a new understanding of the universe as being made entirely of energy, and not only that, but an energy that responds to how we think. This energy is malleable to human intention and expectation, can be consciously caused to flow out into the world and affect other energy systems. Interactions between energy systems, including humans, involves a blending, depletion, or absorption of energy. The insight teaches how to observe this energy through an enhanced, heightened sensitivity to beauty. Beauty is on the same wavelength as this invisible energy, and by being in tune to the beauty in nature or even in others, we can begin to tune into the energy fields. The insight talks about perceiving auras in a specific way, as seeing energy fields around individuals or nature in certain colors. I want to point out that not everyone will see auras and energy fields in the same way. Some will feel into them, feel what others are emitting by being around them. Some people will see them, but not everyone will see colours either. You might just see a white glow, or you could even see a swirly field, or nothing at all. Remember that everything is frequency, and ultimately, it will depend on what frequency you are picking up and tuning into. Only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum is the colourful aura that is described in the third insight. The fourth insight. The fourth insight points out that we as humans have been unconsciously competing for this particular energy that flows between people. We draw it from each other and protect ourselves from others attempting to draw it from us. This can lead to some nasty interactions in which we humans will age each other in the competition for energy. The fifth insight! This insight reveals that competition for energy is unnecessary because subtle energy exists in abundance. You can draw in energy from the infinite universe and fill yourself up with a sense of love. When we give our love to something, we create an energetic current that energizes ourselves as well as the object of our love. A quote from the book best describes this as, Love is not an intellectual concept or moral imperative or anything else. It is a background emotion that exists when one is connected to the energy available in the universe, which of course is the energy of God. Being in love is the most hedonistic thing you can do. The Sixth Insight In order to be in a state of love with the world, we have to let go of old patterns of behavior we developed to take energy from others. These are called control dramas, which we can clear by simply being conscious of them and realizing the higher truth behind our control drama fantasy. There are four control dramas. Two are actively demanding energy, and two are passively creating conditions in which energy is sent. Active control dramas include intimidation and interrogation. 
asking questions, and then picking apart the answers. Passive control dramas include aloofness, creating an air of mystery that entices others to send energy, and the poor me control drama, creating a sense that if others don't provide energy, something awful will happen to the individual. In realizing our control drama, it exposes the true self which energizes our lives by showing us who we are, the path we are on, and what we're doing here. Second, we have to clear out our control dramas. We must understand our parents' control dramas and how they shaped ours. Then, we must learn the meanings that our parents' lives had for us and how this determines our own developmental work. The energy conflict between our parents and us becomes a series of lessons to show us the silver lining that lies beyond the energy conflict. From here, you'll become a synthesis of your mother and father's unconscious teaching without any negative emotions in the way. The seventh insight. Once you are cleared of traumas, you can build energy through contemplation and meditation. Focus on the basic life question and start writing a steady stream of intuition, dreams, and synchronistic coincidences, all guiding you in the direction of your evolution and transformation. Center yourself on your life path by discovering the immediate smaller questions that currently confront you in life. These questions always pertain to the larger question and define where you currently are on your lifelong quest. The Eighth Insight This insight tells us that we can aid others as they bring us the answers we seek. It describes a whole new ethic on how people should treat each other in order to facilitate everyone's evolution. In relating to others, it points out that children can be raised without control dramas if they have a constant, undivided access to an adult who can give them the energy they need. Evolution can't be done alone, so begin to practice this new ethic by uplifting those who cross your path. Talk to people who you meet coincidentally or make spontaneous eye contact with. You and them each have a message or learning that helps bring you up to a higher awareness of your lives. Everyone who we meet has a message for us. The Celestine Prophecy also discusses relationships. Avoid codependent relationships, which involves an addiction to other people. This subtle energy has a male and female side. In many cases, a couple will lock into each other's energies and fall madly in love. But if their focus stays tethered to each other, they are not tuned to the infinite energy of the universe. They eventually begin to compete with each other for energy. This restarts the control dramas. This is the falling in love and out of love phenomenon. This prophecy calls for people to be whole before connecting with another. Connecting with another in this way, together you'll create a super person. The ninth insight. The ninth and final insight is about conscious evolution. Humans consciously participate in their evolution by living according to their intuition, which guides them in such a way as to increase their energy. Our technology will do more of our work for us and allow us to focus on our own spiritual growth. In doing so, we can increase our bodily vibration to a level much higher than the dimension of this current plane and consciously move into a higher frequency or dimension of our universe. In doing so, we would literally disappear from the visible perception of many people in this lower frequency, just as Jesus and other high energy people have done throughout time. The more beauty we can see, the more we evolve. The more we evolve, the higher we vibrate. Ultimately, our increased perception and vibration will open us up to a heaven that is already before us. We just can't see it yet. At some point, everyone will vibrate highly enough so that we can walk into heaven in our same form. And that's badass.